This is my introduction to Bryozoan poster, and I'm going to show you some Bryozoans of Cincinnati's world famous fossils. Bryozoans, or moss animals, are colonial animals resembling coral, only much smaller. There are about 5,000 species living today, and several times that many in the fossil record. They live in the oceans as well as the lakes and streams, from the deepest depths to the shallow pools. From Arctic to the tropics, they are eaten by fish and sea urchins and can be microscopic to three feet across. Bryozoans look a lot like corals, but are far more complex. Bryozoans have internal organs, while corals are little more than a stomach with tentacles. Like brachiopods, they use a lophophore to feed on plankton in the water. A zooid starts out life by settling on a hard surface and secreting a hard shell made of calcium carbonate and chitin. It then buds asexually, meaning every animal in the colony is a clone of the original. The zooids specialize in different jobs, some filter feeding, some cleaning, building the colony, or reproducing. Like coral, they can take many forms. Sheets, fans, crusts, lumps, twigs, as well as corkscrews and borings. Bryozoans are one of the most common fossils in the Cincinnati, and sometimes making up the bulk of a rock layer. The broken bits can be found littering the ground. The zooid openings look like tiny pinholes and don't have any septa. Bryozoans look a lot like coral, but the individual zooids are so small you can't see them without magnification. This photograph of a living bryozoan is seen in today's seas was taken. This photograph was taken by Dr. David Meyer. Uh, he is a dry dredger member and a crinoid expert. He's one of the professional paleontologists that meet at the uh, dry dredgers monthly meetings. He's one of our advisors. Bryozoans start out as a single zooid, which buds new ones to form a colony. Bryozoans use a feathery filter called a lophophore to get food from the water. This is a close-up photo of the lophophore. Beating its little cilli to uh, catch the plankton. All zooids are clones of the first zooid that started the colony. This is a photograph of a fossilized Ordovician brachiopod seashell. And on top of the surface of that shell you can see this lace-like pattern which is actually a bryozoan. Some bryozoans called cyclostomes form lacy colonies on hard surfaces. This one is sharing the back of a raffinous queen of brachiopod with cornulites of worm tube. These are the worm tubes and this is the bryozoan. This is showing the anatomy of an individual zooid. The lophophore, pharynx, operculum, anus, intestine, simple poor walls, the stomach, eggs, frontal membrane, calcareous exoskeleton. So this is a colonial animal and one little tiny compartment uh, will build on top of another and top of another and these have an organizing structure. Some are very abstract, some of them are just like mounds. They get the name moss animal because the first ones that were described by science resembled the ones that scientists first saw looked like moss to their eyes. However, more accurate, had they seen the ones in Cincinnati, they probably would have called it a twig-like animal because they look like broken twigs to us. The vast majority of them look like broken twigs in the Cincinnati fossils. I'm going to give you a close-up view of the uh, mosaic photos of living as well as some extinct bryozoans. And these bryozoans are uh, soft, some of them are soft-bodied, and they live in both uh, tropical as well as marine saltwater. The ones that are in freshwater are all soft-bodied, however.
Ron Fine, uh, one of the members of uh, the Dry Drudgers, he spent a lot, considerable amount of time making these science posters. And uh, he made all these mosaic photos. He inserted this in the, in the science poster. This science poster is not for sale, but it's just uh, for educational uses. It's not for profit. That's beautiful. Look at all the little tiny ziboid loaf of four sticking up. Bryozoans, um, modern ones today, some of them have been used in medicine. There's a drug called bryozoan statin, which is used to uh, treat some forms of cancer. They've taken the, the uh, bryozoan bodies and turned it into a medicine. You can look that up on the internet if you like. Bryozoan statin is the name of the drug. And it's usual. You usually save some of the better uh, specimens for the later videos. I film outdoors for all the sunlight. So you get a little bit of uh, traffic noise and birds flying by. Here are uh, oh, about a dozen broken bits and pieces of bryozoan fragments in a rock. They're from several different species. And they do indeed look like broken twigs. Let me give you a close-up. This uh, camcorder, if I become closer and closer, it acts like a hand lens. And you can see each individual zooid. Each little hole had the little tentacles coming out and eating the plankton. Each one of those little holes had an animal and a compartment, and that built up the body of the bryozoan. And here, uh, right next to it, is a big coral. The polyp is much, much larger. Here the polyp is the size of a BB. There's my finger for scale. And here's my finger for scale next to the bryzoan. So much, much smaller. Superficially they resemble one another, but the, uh, the polyps are much tinier. They're totally distinct, different species. It's like confusing, uh, a rough analogy would be uh, squirrels and chipmunks. They look alike a little bit, but they're different species. Here is a larger bryozoan, uh, twig, a twig-like bryozoan, and, and the patterns are somewhat uh, flat and almost like a chain-link fence where the arms have grown into one another. The negative space is a diamond pattern. And um, this one's a little bit uncommon because it's large and it's fairly whole on this rock. Most are bryozoans in the Cincinnati and Fossil series, fossil rocks look like this. Just all types of uh, hundreds of them thrown together. Entire bryzoan reefs uh, grew in place, and they were the they were the forest, so to speak, the underwater, the undersea forest of all the little animals. That is, they other animals were swimming in and around and on top of and anchoring themselves to these bryozoans and making them their homes. Here's another bryozoan fragment. They're, this is all from one individual uh, bryozoan and the arms, the outer arms are broken but we have the heart of a bryozoan with many of its segments sticking out. They are one of the most common fossils of the Cincinnatian. Again entire reefs were made up of these and they're extremely plentiful. People don't get too, ordinarily most people don't get too excited about them because they just take them for granted. They're everywhere, they're stepped on, they're broken bits and pieces. However, some, if you take the time, uh, I've actually picked up the pieces and gl glued them back together to make uh, beautiful whole ones intact. And I'll show you those in some of my other videos. Here's another... Uh, 
example of them being broken bits and pieces. This is a very large bryze zone and it had uh, fronds. It had uh, appendages similar to leaf lettuce. And this is fragmented. Some of the pieces are broken off. Um, most of our fossils are broken. The rare ones are when they're found entirely whole. But uh, see all the individual pores, the zooid openings on all these.